if you uh, are not in the field, students, please come forward, okay? <clears throat> um, I want you to, you're not going to understand the, the professional details, but there's a structure of this talk which I hope you can pick up. You know, what, what, uh, <clears throat> please, I, I'm not trying to punish you. This, this class is very punishing because most of the talks go over your head. 80% of the talk will also, but <clears throat> I hope, and we can have a discussion afterwards, that you can get a structure out of this talk <clears throat> of what happened. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to start with. Now for the title, if you don't know what the gross manure bound, I did not explain it, but the violation of a bound, better there's, there better be a good reason. So actually, uh, it turns out we do not really violate the bound, <coughs> but there is a violation of the bound, so I'll, I'll explain that. And uh, on one hand, this is really a research in motion, but I'm putting a joke on myself because, uh, yeah, this is a company logo here, research in motion. And slightly older people know that there was this famous Blackberry, even up until a few years ago. <coughs> when Nokia was still, you know, the king of uh, mobile. But this is what's happened to RIM, more or less, if you want. I think it's still there, but uh, it, it's not what it was. <clears throat> now, for people in particle and cosmology and mathematical physics, <clears throat> you know RIM, Research in Motion, funded uh, the Perimeter Institute, which is quite a nice institute now. Okay? So, <clears throat> I put up this as a joke in case you notice. But also because uh, that's what I want to talk about, how it occurred in terms of a research project. So there were two threads, and somehow they merged. Well, not exactly merged. They, they merged with me, if you want. And with some serendipity, in case you don't know this Persian version, you know, Persian-based word, uh, serendipity means, and I, I think this is what <coughs> you want to work uh, as a researcher. This is from uh, Merriam Webster. Luck that takes the form of finding valuable or pleasant things that are not looked for. If you're doing research, <coughs> most of the time, whether theory or experiment, most of the time you're just doing labor, day in, day out, doing integration, soldering, whatever. There's no way out of that. <coughs> From time to time, you want to have some serendipity, what we otherwise call discovery, if you want. So I'll tell you the story. <coughs> now, two threads, as I said. One thing is uh, Kauri. <coughs> he's a student of a friend. And the other one is John. And I don't know why he is not here. <laughs> if you have his talk, this talk is, is about him. <laughs> That's the way he is. <coughs> so it's about the. Uh, what? Who is a friend? Uh, next page. <laughs> the talk is structured, you know. <coughs> um, so, Kauri is a student still. <coughs> John is not a student, uh, is a senior researcher in, uh, in particle physics experimental group doing CMS. <coughs> okay, so um, I was handling both and uh, <coughs> somehow I and these people as well, I think, were helped. Um, <coughs> okay. So who is my friend? Kisano Junji. Okay. So I've, I've known him uh, 25 years, maybe. You see that old? <coughs> you know, I, I think uh, I shared with him an office for at least a couple of weeks, or maybe two months. I can't remember. So that's how we date back. <clears throat> and in late 2013, he wrote to me and said, he's a professor at Nagoya University in the ELAP, or ETEN. So he said, you know, I have a student. Uh, <clears throat> we have a program to send them abroad. So can, can the student stay with you for a few months, of course, meaning uh, trying different type of research. <clears throat> so Fuyu Tokauri came. Tokauri is, uh, <laughs> uh, for Chinese, you recognize that but not this thing. So I guess you can't really see this very dark picture. <coughs> Actually, she was here the second half of last year. She's a tiny 
very, very cute little girl, if you remember. <coughs> um, so he arrived before summer, uh, and, uh, and then uh, in fall, each for about two months, and we finished a paper submitted after she left, <coughs> and uh, this talk is about how that paper uh, come to be. Now, since it's a French, you know, I underline the friendship thing, <coughs> and maybe for National Pride and Pride of the Institute, I had to take it seriously, you know what I mean. <coughs> so shortly after uh, Kari arrived uh, at, in, the, uh, in the HEP group, I talked about, you know, my feeling towards uh, labor physics and nuclear physics, sort of the two <coughs> intersecting things that I'm interested in. And then I went down to OHCP, <coughs> you know, it's called OHCP, it's a new conference series called Large Hadron Collider Physics. So last year was held at Columbia University in New York City, but I think uh, what happened next has these things uh, in part. So I'll come back to the OHCP thing. <coughs> so in in the hydrogen group, I'm kind of the mastermind, if you want. <clears throat> and the principle that I established in our group is that we aim to own papers. We, we don't just want to be part of a paper. We want to work out a paper and claim it our own. Now, this is really not easy in CMS, because CMS has 3,000 uh, people, awarded 200 institutes, many of them premium, right? Uh, sorry, I don't... What, I didn't find any really public, uh, I should ask Kauri for a nice photo. Here is a joke meaning that I do not show ugly male photos, okay? But also because John uh, worked on penguin. I'll mention, there is not, not really mentioning, but I'll touch on it. So John, whose uh, Chinese name is Zhao Yuan, finished these two papers well, not single-handedly, but it was his result that went into the paper, and that we claim is our result. And I'll come to this physical review letters soon. So this is kind of a backdrop, you know, two things, you know, on the back of my head. At LHCP, I picked up, you know, you can see the connection, top to charm decays. Um, We'll, we'll see pictures of them later, and Z, you'll see more later, and this Z prime. <coughs> Don't ask these questions now, because uh, the professional part will gradually come out. I just hope you to start to get slightly familiar with it. Okay, so the topic, I think, uh, I, I don't know how much John has worked on this, but at least with Kari, we finished the paper. So this is the backdrop, <coughs> and um, I really claim to be incubating top changing uh, neutral current studies. The motivation came from the Tevatron uh, before and after the start of OHC running. Um, we saw the measurements of these, you can see the bounds, you know, there's a few percent bound. <coughs> and these two papers are the former ones that <coughs> I wrote here. Well, not, not I wrote, but I put down here. And we really claim uh, to, to have dominated these things. <coughs> and this is the current world best limit. Not a very strong limit, you would think, <coughs> but uh, it's the current world best at the premium machine. And our group did it, John did it. I put <coughs> uh, John and another postdoc uh, into work on top to charm Hicks, not the subject of the day, but uh, extremely ex intriguing. Okay, let me give you a picture. This looks like a <coughs> level, an energy level. No, they are not. Uh, the reason I ask the students to, to sit forward is that particle physics kind of started with a chaos. Depends on your, at least flavor physics. <coughs> Back in 1947, when it was discovered, in 1964, CP violation was discovered. <coughs> now, in the 70s, uh, Bemis on a uh, saw was discovered, and then the B quark was discovered slightly later. <coughs> and top. This here is the 20th anniversary of discovery of the top. And <coughs> let's see what I want to have to say. 
it looks like a, a major discovery. It happens 20 years after the original uh, particle discovery. Well, in top, not really. We have not discovered anything unique besides its uh, <coughs> mass about the top. However, <coughs> there is an indicator. The original big discovery of CP violation that led to a Nobel Prize is a 10 to the minus 3 sensitivity. In the previous page, I showed that uh, this T to CZ we have reached beyond 10 to the minus 3. So I think this 20 year maturity we're getting there. So I hope that uh, from now on, uh, at the OHC and so on, we will study new physics. Okay? Well, we'll study physics. Now, for the students, I hope, of course, you all look at your own thing, but you're then wasting your time because it's not efficient. What I'm trying to tell you here in this plot <coughs> is that it takes time to incubate, and this is the current timeline. In, I'm giving hope in top physics, we're, we're hoping to discover. I'll show you something here. <coughs> we're hoping to discover more things uh, about B physics, and the theme of the day, uh, and somewhat surprising, is after all this long trek, well, we are hoping again to discover new things. <coughs> because this year is 50 years, not just of chaos physics, but uh, last year, 50 years of CP vibration. And this was also uh, this was this year. Okay. <coughs> now, the reason that top is uh, so difficult <coughs> is that because in a standard model. <coughs> the lifetime is fast. <coughs> Decay is fast, uh, but on the other hand, the redemption is that it's uniquely heavy. We don't understand why it's heavy, but that's the way it is. By the way, uh, these are <coughs> this is a senior group member, Bob Shong, our former <coughs> department chair, Shong Yi Lashi. So he was a co-spokesperson of the experiment, one of the experiments that discovered this. <coughs> and John should be here because I'm mentioning his name in a nice way, but that's the way it is, second time I say it. You tell him, okay? And uh, Pangti, I don't know what, whether he has to teach at this moment. So with direct CP violation, a lot uh, is coming from our group. Of course, uh, Bob did this not within the group, but he's here with us. Okay? And actually, these processes, I didn't write it. The reason I picked uh, uh, no kicking penguins is because the backdrop is are the so-called penguin diagrams, which I would not explain. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, um, you see here that there's this B sub S to mu mu as a landmark of roughly this year. So, <coughs> um, Christmas Eve last year, uh, we asked Jack, Jack Chen, Chen Kai Gong Lao to give a talk on this. This is stolen from him. So, starting in 1984, this is Clio, a Cornell, uh, a Cornell facility, they started doing this kind of measurement. So more than 30 years, <coughs> you can see this trend. You see many curves like this in across the field, okay? People, there's a pond of gold perceived, and people just push, change material, uh, change uh, apparatus, improve sensitivity, and so on. So <coughs> this is a so-called holy grail physics, if you want, a pursuit. So B sub S to mu mu, <coughs> uh, we measured uh, last year. And combining both, we really measured it this year, okay? Uh, um, so this is, a, this is still coming from Jack's talk. The only thing new is that I use this because it's, uh, I can say it verbally, but, and this is an internal talk. The Nature paper would probably come out next week. So uh, you heard it first here. Don't go out and send Facebook images of this slide. <laughs> but uh, you'll hear uh, something, uh, even from the university, I believe, okay? So let me show you a diagram. Within the standard model, look, this is very rare, 10 to the minus 9, okay? <clears throat> That's what, uh, 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 a billion. One billion these only one decay this way. So this is what happens in the standard model. <clears throat> uh, the BS, the notation is that it contains an S quark and has an anti-B quark, and it's a neutral object. <coughs> so these W and Zs are the electroweak bosons, like heavy photons. <coughs> and they mediate, you know, they can change S to T and change T back to B. 
And this is what we call a quantum loop diagram. It's allowed by quantum mechanics that although these are heavy objects, by uncertainty principle, they fluctuate out for a brief time, and they convert. So they make this conversion here and go through this other heavy object, and then come back to uh, <coughs> objects that you detect in your apparatus. So I've not fully explained it, but it's extremely rare. Uh, the result is basically in agreement. It's really standard, and it's a 30-year pro after uh, more or less after the beam mesons themselves were discovered. <coughs> okay, that was the introduction. Prologue. <coughs> so then I mentioned the two threads, one more like a theory <coughs> thread, one like a <coughs> um, experimental agenda uh, thread. I'm basically a flavor physicist in the blood, <coughs> and I'm, as I said, I'm incubating uh, top changing neutral currents or top FCSC. I think it's a new domain. So <clears throat> from here, let me enter this new frontier. Now, <clears throat> you don't need to be a particle physics to, to get a feel of this. Okay, maybe I should come back <clears throat> and say that this Z <clears throat> is like a heavy photon. It's neutral. Its mass is all, it's about 100 times the, the mass of the proton. Okay? It exists in nature. Without the W interaction here, the sun will not shine. I hope you understand that. So think about it. This coupling does not exist in the Sandin model. So therefore, we search for it. If it happens, <coughs> the Sandin model expectation through a similar loop diagram is like 10 to the minus 14. Okay? So any discovery, measurement, will be a huge discovery in physics. Okay? <coughs> the holy grail. Now, this is even more interesting. Why do I put both in red? <coughs> because this is, you know, <coughs> first prize in mass. 173 GeV, <coughs> almost 200 times the proton mass. And the Higgs, discovered uh, only a couple of years ago, the Nobel Prize given a year and a half ago, is the second most heavy object. <coughs> and the, probably the, you know, the giver of mass to all these particles. Well, maybe not this one. <coughs> So I find it extremely intriguing if the mass giver, <coughs> since we don't understand it, if it produces this forbidden coupling <coughs> within the standard model. So that's why in, in the introduction, in the prologue, <coughs> I said, you know, these things I'm incubating. But today my, my subject is more on this. Okay? But let me come back to TCZ. <coughs> this is a slide stolen from uh, this talk, <coughs> excuse me. Um, anyway, the box is empty, so you can derive a limit, the best limit to date. I can tell you the stories about how you get TRLs in uh, CMS, but um, unless you ask, then you bypass. The thing is, in writing this paper, even I had to get in, and you know, I claimed to write this ending sentence. But it was very frustrating because uh, we almost did not get into PRL because the referees asked, um, <coughs> you know, I, I don't see theory papers that can really justify that this, this is something staggering. <coughs> so I surveyed and found this, but this paper was 2007, before LHC started. <coughs> and lo and behold, same author, Perez here, they have retreated by the assault. Uh, of experiment. So their target value now is below this uh, 10 to the minus one, <coughs> 10 to the minus three even, okay? So let me not get into this, but you can, you can see the ideas of what uh, the new physics things that particle physicists are pursuing. Okay, this looks like a jump, <coughs> but you saw a loop diagram. <coughs> so there's another measurable, I can't even define it here, um, this is a new result compared to, the blue is one, a few years old. Um, <coughs> oops. When, <coughs> when you add three times the data, and the significance doesn't improve, this is a uh, not good, not bad situation, but really not too good, okay? But I don't know what to make of it. But <coughs> this is where the Z prime enters. <coughs> 
So this P by prime, whatever it is, is an introduction saying that there is a hint of a tension <coughs> compared to, this is the standard model expectation, the purple stuff. There's some tension between a measurement and what, and this is what we do. We, we just make measurements and we hope, we hope we make a discovery that deviates from the standard model. <coughs> so this is how I picked up the topic at LHCP I mentioned uh, in the prologue. So there was this talk, uh, you can see LHCP June 5th, uh, uh, Wolfgang Altmanshofer. So he said, you know, blah, 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 this is the paper you can produce this top to charm Z prime. And the Z prime, <coughs> you, you can see here, is related to uh, the previous page, <coughs> this P pi prime. I didn't really clearly define it because I think it doesn't really help. Okay. So they have a model, uh, I'll come to it briefly, <coughs> uh, motivated by, by rare BD case, but it, uh, so <coughs> I went to the talk really because uh, uh, of rare top decay. I am trying to incubate that field, and if there's a talk, I went there. So at the end of the talk, I asked at the back of the room, I was standing, I said, well, how do you search for this? You know, I view myself there as an experimentalist. <coughs> and he replied uh, in Z prime to mu mu or tau tau mu. Why? <coughs> because this is the so-called L mu minus L tau symmetry um, gauge. It is anomaly free. <coughs> this is very unique. I'm not spending time to explain it. It originated from uh, our own professor Shao Gang when he was in Melbourne, I think. So it's the difference between the muon and tau electron number. <coughs> now the electron number and muon number and, and, and tau number together, if you want, has something related to electric charge. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> but if you gauge them individually, there's a problem. But if the charge are opposite between uh, two type of leptons, then anomaly cancels. Anomaly is a quantum problem, which I would not get into, <coughs> but that's a theory side, okay? <coughs> okay, forgot to put down. The motivation here is a leptonic force. That would sound fancy, okay? It's a gauged tau muon number difference, so it's a gauge symmetry concept, and this is only on the lepton side. But lo and behold, here you have the quark side. So this involves some model, model building on top of the concept of a lepton force. <coughs> QED, electrodynamics, is not just lepton force. It's much more universal. Any, any guy that has charge. But here there's the muon number, tau lepton number. Well, back to my thread of Kauri <coughs> and et cetera. <coughs> so remember, Kauri arrived in the middle of May and I was mostly gone. So when I finally came back, I had a meeting with them. And <coughs> before that, I had relayed this information. I said, okay, look at this paper, look at this talk. <coughs> I'm interested in this. I'm interested in this because I've been on the lookout <coughs> for, for top SCNC. And if it's a new object, even much, much better. So that's what I mean by research in motion. <coughs> and by, by a nile serendipity, when we met at that time, the same authors just posted the new paper. And the new paper was very intriguing, I'll come to it, actually he ended up a few months later as a PRL. So I'll introduce to you one of my research tools. Nobody laughs. <laughs> People are welcome to join, join me there, okay? This is what I call my beer place. Now look, when you go there, the first half hour, first hour may be fine, but afterwards it's all rubbish. But it, it, it facilitates something. Okay. Oh, <coughs> uh, this is just to say, in my two hats, uh, with some understanding better with theorists, I also chat with experimentalists, <coughs> and I'm trying to get them going. So this is the picture. And now remember, this uh, it's not on this figure. <coughs> but the Z prime is decaying to muons and tau lepton and neutrinos, if you want. That's the meaning of having both muon number, tau number, and therefore neutrino, muon, neutrino, tau. <coughs> but this is the model building part <coughs> involving quarks. What happens, you introduce vector-like quarks. This Z prime is just notation saying there's an extra U1. 
I didn't label it here, <coughs> but it, it, it's like a U1 prime, okay? A QED is a U1, but this is a U1 of L mu minus L tau. But the model building here is that the Q part, D part, U part, not only heavy, has Z prime charge. And uh, there's this series of, <coughs> this one you saw from Oldman's office talk, but this is the original model building. But I'm fond of this, because <coughs> this may disappear, <coughs> but this is uniquely probed uh, with, with top decay. So this is their formula, <coughs> and so it has both these terms and these terms. <coughs> Actually, the, the QB also enters here, <coughs> or, or the B has a top counterpart. So I already transmit the message to <coughs> experimental group, saying, hey, this is a fascinating signature. <coughs> you know, it's not just a Z, you, you can go for a different man Z prime, <coughs> and the branching ratio is huge. <coughs> I hope you get that, because the Z branching ratio to mu mu, the Z mu mu branching ratio is 3%. Here's 10 times larger, <coughs> okay? George, what is the weight of this Z prime? I'll come into this at the very end. For this Z prime, uh, it's very large, okay? But your question I reserve to the very end. <coughs> Here, the Z prime uh, would in general be very large, okay? Uh, no worry of lifetime issues. Okay, this is just improved understanding <coughs> for those who know CK mixing. Here, it looks like a blood. <coughs> in this way, we have massaged it, you know, this factor is the same, <coughs> into a form such that these are like CKM elements, or analogous to it. Uh, the quintessential CKM element is the cubical angle. If we insert that, we get an estimate of order 10 to the minus 4. Okay. So that's benchmark, if you want. Um, this part is to introduce to you <coughs> what this diagram means. This is, looks uh, like a model building, but what happens here, I'm tracing for you, there's an extra U1 prime. L mu minus L tau, we gauge it. <coughs> so it couples, this Z prime couples on this side <coughs> to uh, L mu minus L tau. But we introduce new field. <coughs> so this U part has U1 prime charge, but the standard model ones don't, okay? <coughs> so therefore, you can produce a Higgs boson that has this U1 prime charge. This thing is in the notation of a VEV because it breaks the U1 prime symmetry generating the Z prime, because the Z prime has mass. <coughs> so the U1 prime charge is flowing like this, and it's conserved in this way, or, or spontaneously broken here. So that's, that's the gist of this diagram. And if you didn't understand that, at least you get a feeling of what theorists are doing in terms of model building. Behind that is just the grunge, okay? Okay, <coughs> so here, although Stantus mildly touched upon it, <coughs> the thing that was staggering to me was that through this development, <coughs> we, we noticed that this Z prime could be extremely light, extremely light. So we turned on, the study topic was we were interested in a T to C Z prime under the constraints uh, imposed on the model by data. <coughs> I remember this paper when in early June when we studied it, this paper already came out, <coughs> and it was very staggering. <coughs> the original model was applied to B physics, you know, like, like in the, let me not go back to them. But they had the thought, they didn't invent this, but the gauge L mu minus L tau, because it has a muon coupling, it was applied to muon G minus 2. So I believe these authors <coughs> wanted to see if there is a model, very nicely motivated gauge model, anomaly free, if it can explain both P5 prime anomaly. I didn't explain that to you. And the muon G minus 2 is a long step. G minus 2 is the, <coughs> it's a G factor deviating from the derived expectation. Okay? <coughs> And there's a known discrepancy for several decade, decades now. Um, so if there's a model, this, this model, it can touch both the P5 prime, their previous paper, <coughs> their PRD, if you want, and <coughs> muon G minus 2. That will be pretty fabulous. That was their aim. But to their surprise, <coughs> this is what they found. <coughs> they found that this process, <coughs> this process, this charm 2, CCFR experiment. So this band here, this blue band, was 
the G minus 2 space, to explain the G minus 2 anomaly. 